Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this training video. I am Daniel Nangelo. Um, today we are going to be looking at how to calculate special weighted food security indicators using your statistical techniques. And uh, this is a part of a series of a training video series that I have been doing lately. And uh, if you are watching or if you are watching me for the very first time, I'm recommending that you watch my previous videos on just how to calculate food security indicators and what each indicator means. And uh, in that particular video, we have discussed. Uh, we were just discussing how to use statistical methods to calculate food security. Then uh, I also have another video that I have done. And um, we uh, in that particular video, we've talked about um, on the use of the statistical techniques and the statistical analysis. We've talked about the various algorithms and we've explained what each means. Then we also talked about when to use which algorithm, when to use which technique when we are working with this just statistical techniques because from that particular video you'll appreciate that um, uh, various situations, various data set uh, will dictate which approach or which method to use. So hang on and let us learn something new. So I just thought that the best way to learn this, uh, these techniques, especially if you are working under food security and livelihoods or climate change, the best way it will be to use case studies. Now with me here, I have a case study whereby we are assuming that uh, you are the M&E &E and learning officer of an international NGO and you've just recently completed an endless household survey of food security and nutrition and are required to calculate the household food security indicators which include the food consumption score, the coping strategy index and the household hunger scale for your project operational area which in, in our case happens to be administrative units using geostatistical methods. Now for our data set, we have a spreadsheet data for the endline household survey. Then you also have map files, which are shape files of the various of, of the administrative units in question or in place within your operational area. Now, let us just do a quick recap of what uh, it means to use uh, um, geographic methods uh, in your analysis now when you in special techniques we have a very common concept which basically means or which usually talks about that things that are close to one another are more alike than those that are further apart and the similarity increases as they become closer and also, the similarity will decrease as these particular items or phenomena become further apart. A classical example is of an industry. Within an industry or a factory vicinity, the level of pollution is going to be very high. And the regions or the areas around that particular area, uh, that particular factory will have high contamination or high concentration of air pollution. But the level of this air pollution will decrease as one moves further away from the factory. The same thing applies within a road transport network. The areas that are very close or just immediate or adjacent to road transport will have high levels of either noise pollution or air pollution. But the level or the amount of pollution or the concentration of pollution will decrease as one moves away from these road networks. Now, it is in this particular concept that we are adapting in our calculation of the food consumption scores, which is one of the indicators of food security. Now, food security is a geographical problem. Why? Because it is related to climate. 
it is related to agriculture and all these items or phenomenons are geographical in nature within your statistical we have methods or we have techniques and there are various of them but for this particular training video series we'll be looking specifically at two of them the first one that we'll be looking at is the TSN polygons and then we are going to advance and look at how to also use inverse distance weighting to calculate spatial aggregated or spatial weighted food consumption scores for our area of study now what are the steps now the first thing that we need to understand let me just first uh, talk about the data set that uh, we've mentioned we say that we have two types of data set and this is a spreadsheet data set basically it, it shows it has an array of data here where we have the unique identifier here that is identifying each of this particular household so each entry is a particular household within this particular study area and if you can look at the second column we have the district the district is a level um, is an administrative unit within this particular area study area and we have a number um we have a number of these particular uh, districts within the study area. So we are going to be using study, uh, geostatistical approaches to calculate the food or the spatial weighted food, co uh, food consumption score for each of these districts. Then we have smaller administrative units within this particular study area. But for now, the approaches that we are going to look at how to calculate this will be the same when you are calculating either bigger or smaller administrative units. Then our indicator is under this particular column that is a food consumption score. Right? I'm not going to talk about this because I've just said that we have a whole new training video on how to calculate all these indicators. Then the columns in uh, in uh, blue these are the GPS location or coordinates for each of these household that was surveyed. Yes, and um, for our data set, we have... Um, for our data set, we have 533 entries or oh, these are 533 households that were surveyed now on the other end we have this is the area of study and within here you can just see that uh, we have these are the various districts right we have a rural that and all that that were depicted within our spreadsheet data here so just to start off we are going to just calculate the mean food consumption score for these districts using the normal statistical methods then we are going to look at them we are going to look at them vis-a-vis -vis the food consumption scores that has been calculated or specially weighted yes that have been calculated using just statistical methods taking into account the removal of geographic inequalities or the geographic biasness so i'm going to quickly just do i'm going to run a pivot table so i'll have it here as my pivot table and i can just have it within a new worksheet like that then I know I need a district, so I'll have it there. Then I know I need food consumption score, so I'll have it here. Then, because I'm looking for mean, I'm going to change this value field settings. And then I'm going to specify that I need average like that. So there I am. It's nicely done. So under here, I can just reduce... Let me read 
it is it to only two two decimal points so these are the food consumption score for the various districts within the study area right so i can just maybe say that uh, for this the, for the whole of this study area this is a statistical mean of food consumption score that is 40.25 and for those who are still doubting what we can still do is we can still do a mean here by just going to auto sum here and looking for still average right so i'll still do an, an average there which is at uh, 40.01 okay sorry that uh, that is not right uh, i can have it there then i'll just, okay i'll have it here then i'll just select this and come to this and select average okay i think that is okay mm. alternatively i can just copy this and paste it here as values and then i can still run my average which is still at 40.1 so i think we're okay with that so um, i'll just delete that okay i can just have it there okay let me just have it mm, i'll have it in a new workbook good good now the next item i am going to do is to just uh, import this data into qgis my household data so i'll just go to quickly to import and i'm going to point to where my data is should be under spreadsheet so that is my household food consumption score that is that i'll click open then i'll just maintain this and come here to point coordinates and match so um, i'll match just x with the longitude and y with the latitude then i'll just quickly my data is in wgs84 so i'll just go wgs84 if you don't if not if you do not have that then you need to click on this and just do a filter of the coding system that your data is in so that is that and then i'll click add then close so my data set is in wgs84 that is why you are seeing it's not plotting here so it doesn't layer because something has happened so good yes there is my data set that is my spreadsheet data that is a household food consumption score then this is my map file that, that those are the districts within my study area that is in borena so um, the next item that we need to do the next step the next step that we need to do 
Um, we've already done uh, the data cleaning. We've calculated the food hunger scores that was already in the final uh, spreadsheet data. We have imported uh, the data into, into QGIS. Um, the next thing that we need to do is to now convert or reproject all our data sets into a projected coordinate system or a UTM. Right? So... <coughs> If you just observe or explore our data, our data is in WGS84, that is just geographic. Um, if you look here, it's, it's in geographic. For my map files from my household data also, it's still in geographic. So the next item is to now convert all of this into UTM. So... Um, I'll just right click and just export them and um, yes I'm going to have it as I'll call it HFS UTM then I'll save it like that I can okay let me just go with HFS like that then I'll change this to my local area project coordinate system which is UTM zone 37N then I'll say OK very good so I'll remove this okay this didn't do what I wanted it to do so okay, let me just quickly remove it Yes, good. I'm going to overwrite. Very good. So I'll remove this. Let me just call it UTM like that and save. So I'll copy this style here. So just say style, copy style, all style categories. I'm going to paste it here. Paste style, all style categories. So I can remove this like that. So um, I've already pre-processed uh, pre my data. There it is. Now this one is now ready for analysis. Now um, this is the data that we'll be working with. But before we continue, I want us to talk about something. Eh? So um, I want us to talk about these tiers and polygons. Right, we've said that uh, things that are close to one another are more alike than those that are, are further apart. Now, the concept of thiocene polygons, the thiocene polygons, a thiocene polygons will will basically generate a polygon based on the area of influence of a particular a sample point. Now, like for our case here. These are the sampled points and which basically represents household. Now, the concept of theos and polygons is saying that um, the data around these sampled points are going to, uh, to a great extent, uh, the values are going to be influenced by uh, each of these sampled points. Now, what, what happens is that theos and polygons will generate an area coverage where uh, where each sample point will influence or areas influenced by will generate polygons of areas influenced by influenced by each sample point now this and polygons usually has um usually uh, has a concept of um 
that it will it uses values of sampled of non sampled points to predict values of unsampled of the other unsampled points so that is a concept of tsn polygons then from that after it has calculated that particular polygons we are going to uh, generate or calculate the weight of each polygon and use it to calculate the final uh, study area food consumption score so just follow along as we as we advance now the next item is now to use the thsn algorithm to generate thsn polygons using the H the household food consumption data set now this data here let me just turn this off we have these are the, our, our household data set that has gps coordinates if you just pro press f6 you should be able to see an equivalent of the spreadsheet from excel so here it is now what we are going to do we are going to use this data set to calculate or to generate TSN polygons so that we are able to visualize the areas of influence or the areas being influenced or the extent of area being influenced by each of these sampled points. So that is the first task. So um, how do we generate TSN polygons? Okay. Okay, something has happened here good yes so this is our data set now the next item is to run the thsn algorithm so i'll go to uh, to processing toolbox if you click on it I'd already launched it, so I'm going to click on it again. So in here, the typically this box is usually on the right here, but I've just moved it here to my left. So I'm going to type TSN like that. So the one that I'm interested with is the one from uh, from Saga. So I'm going to right click on it to launch it. Then I'm going to specify my points as my household uh, my H fcs data set that is a household data set then um, for now i'm just going to run good very good now this is uh, these are the thsn polygons that have been calculated based on the layer extent of this um point layer that is a household data now but we are interested to find the influence of each household to the extent of our study area so what we are going to do We are going to increase this frame size so that it's able to cover the entire extent of the study area. So I'm going to give it something like, um, let me give it 500. Then I'm going to run again. Okay, I don't think there has been much change here. So, let me just increase this to maybe, uh, let's talk of maybe 50, let me put it to 50,000.
you need to be increasing those values and trying to look at the output just be increasing those values until you end up with a polygon that is able to cover the entire extent of the study area it is very important that it covers the entire extent of the study area good okay i think yes this has shown some change very good so let me just remove this others quickly so that uh, we know which one we are working with so that is that okay uh let me maybe give it something like eight uh, and run Aha, uh -huh. I believe this one works for us. Right, so let me just... Yes, yes, this one works for us because it has been able to cover the entire study area. So I'm just going to perform some layering techniques so that I have my layer, my point layer on top like that. Then, okay, I'll remove this. I can close this, then I remove this polygon here so that I only remain with this. Now, um, after I've done this, I'm going to run to intersect. So I'll still go back to my toolbox, my processing toolbox, and run the intersect tool. So, still, I'm going to use the intersect tool from Saga. That is a poly, uh, should be, um, yes, the intersect from, good, so I'm going to run it like that. Now, my layer one is going to be my polygon, right so let me just quickly see what polygons we have here yes it's going to be this polygon so then my layer b is going to be my district or my uh, map file for my study area then just to make sure that split path is checked then i'm just going to run it by clicking on run very good so if i just go back here i have the result here so um let me run the intersect tool again so make sure that um, the coordinates are the same. Otherwise, you won't, it won't calculate anything. So I'll make my layer A is going to be my polygons. Layer B is going to be the study area. So then we click on run. very good nicely done so i can just close this now uh, let me maybe just uh, remove this polygon like this then um, maybe i'll copy I'll copy this tile. Or maybe let me just uh, remove 
let me give it change something here for my fill i'll remove say no brush for my stroke color let me give it different stroke color something like blue apply Hello. Eh. Hey. Bad. Akona pesa. <laughs> eh. Hey. Unataka ni kuombe? Eh. Hey. <laughs> okay, sawa. Aye. Okay, sawa. So let us uh, let us interpret these stairs and polygons. Eh? So this is our stairs and polygon. Now, um, what it means? Let me just use the identify tool here. If you click on this particular area here, this stairs and polygon here is the area of in, is the area being influenced by this particular household here if you click here this is the area being influenced by this particular uh, household here by this particular uh, sample point also the same thing if you click here sorry let me click one here this is the area being influenced by this particular point here this is the area being influenced by this particular point here is the area so what it means this point is influencing the whole of this area so that is what we mean by theas and polygons and i have discussed this uh, in, in detail in my previous video on on, on just statistics and theas and polygons so um, that is that so what i'm going to do I'm going to click close like that then also this and also that so that I'm only have so <sighs> we're interested with this result layer now if we just quickly I'm going to rename this I'm going to rename it to Uh, TSN HFC, right? Just to mean that uh, these are the area of influence that are being influenced by each of this household, right? So, um, that is that. Um, So I'm going to open the attribute table like this. Then I'm going to perform something. So after we generated our theas and polygons, 
we've run our intersect algorithm. Now it's time for us to calculate the area of each Thiessen polygon so that we are able to calculate the weight of each Thiessen polygon to its district polygon. So, I'm going to make use of the field calculator. So, under here, these are all the Thiessen polygons that are within this layer. So, I have my food consumption score here. What I'm going to do uh, Okay My data set is very long So I'll just run my I'll go to field calculator Then I'm going to create a new field I'm going to call it area so um, then I'm going to have it as this um, I'm going to have it as Okay, let me have it as double Okay, not actually a virtual field so I'll have it as decimal real. Then I can have this output at 10. My precision can be at at 4. Let me have it at 5. So then to calculate area, I basically just go to geometry. Then I pick the area that has a dollar sign like this. I double click on it like that now this unit is because my data set my layer here it's in utm so all the values are going to be in meters so whatever area i'm going to have here this value is in square meters so i need to convert it to kilometers so i'm going to divide by a thousand or rather i can just multiply this with the 10 to the power of what to the power of negative six like that so okay, this one will convert my values into square kilometers like this so let me just maybe i can do it like that good then i'm going to click okay so i now have a new column here for my area area of each polygon so I'm going to calculate, I want us to calculate the weight of each polygon. Now to calculate the weight of each polygon, I'm going to just go back to my field calculator. Then I'm going to have a column there, call it weight. And for the weight, I can have it still as um, decimal in real. I can have it at four like that. Then, this is how I'm going to do it. Eh? I'll come to my fields and values like this. Then I'll pick the new, that is double click here. So I'll have it like this. Then I'm going to divide it by the sum. Right? Now, let me just talk about sum. I'll come back here and type sum. So I have sum here. So it's expression group by then the filter condition. So I'll have it here as type here sum. Like that. So it's sum of what? It's sum of this. So fields and values. Is the sum of this then comma uh, group by with an underscore notice is showing me how I'm supposed to write this expression here then I'll do my filter condition like that then I'll say filter by what uh -huh. 
my districts are stored and um under ADM my district names are stored under ADM 3 EN so I have ADN here this one here so I'll have it like that then I'll close it like that okay that is an error well, I don't need to be good yes yes it's okay because there are various districts in within here so i'm going to click on okay good 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 so i now have my weight here right now mm -hmm. uh, i'm going to just organize my columns I'm going to deselect all so that I only have FID uh, district FSC and um, I'll have this also then together with area and weight then click OK good this is nice now so I have this, this, this here. Good. So there, those are all the uh, polygons. like that so um this weights for each district should add up to one so let us find out we'll go back to our field calculator here then i'll just still run some then i'll say area come to fields and values <coughs> I'll pick weight, then I'll comma group by group by full column and say group by ADM three close. So do you see it should be one? Right, so we can maybe do just a virtual field here and say uh, uh, this to uh, this dot weight. So I can have it as a decimal number good so when i run it good so mm, for for double you can see that eh, it's one one point zero zero one we can have it as one we have zero point nine nine here we can have it as one Right, okay, we have here thus here. That is one, do you see? And from here, 
to here so you can see and there are weights if you calculate this 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 and this it should give you a weight of one uh, let me i'm not so sure about that let me have it from this end good right so so that is it so um, i can't remove this i do not need this so i have it like that so i'll select this okay like that now the next item the next item that we need to do is um we need to calc um we now have the weight right Now, for the next item is to calculate the spatial weighted food consumption score using the weight of each polygon. So, how do we do that? We use the formula the food consumption score of each household multiplied by the weight. Now, remember that we said each TSN polygon corresponds to each individual sample point and for our case the sample point is what the sample point is a is a household food consumption score right so we have 533 which means that we have 533 TSN polygons and we've just calculated the weights of this particular TSN polygons so what we are going to do is to calculate to multiply the food consumption score of each household to its uh, to its uh, requisite uh, spatial weight right so in QGS we can just create um, we go to fill calculator we create a, a new column then we enter this formula so I'll just go back to QGS like this fill calculator uh -huh. so i can maybe call it a special weighted maybe just a uh, let me call it special let me call it just aerial uh, food consumption area aerial aerial fc s like that and then i can have it as decimal let me have it at three Okay, let me have it at three is okay. Oh, let me just have it at one like that. So I'll come here and say I'm going to use fields and values. So I have my weight column and food consumption score. So I'll have this multiplied by the weight. So there it is. Right. Now. Right. So. Click OK. Okay, you didn't do it. Let me see what is the problem again. So, can come here. Aerial.
okay uh, yes this was the problem so i'll remove this and click on ok so i now have the area uh, the food consumption score for each the areas the special aggregated food consumption score for each household so what i'm going to do is to now pre-aggregate it to administrative levels so i'm going to calculate i'm going to do something here I can still calculate the average for each administrative unit just by coming here again to food consumption score. I'll type here this is aggregated. Aggregated FES. Mm -hmm. Let me just call it food consumption one. So I can have it as um, like that. Have it at, uh, at one also. Then I'll just run the sum. Then I'll say fields and values. So I'll have Arial here like this. Then I'll come and say group by. Let's go group by. Group by what? Group by ADM3EN. That is the district name. So I'll have it like that. So I'll click OK. Okay, I keep forgetting. Mm, let me deselect this so that it runs properly. So I have that. Date existing. So I can still rerun it like this. Here it is. So click OK. Good. So there it is. So I can now come here and copy this and have it in my Excel. Move it in sheet two. Good, good. So, uh, So I'll come here and just run my I'll run my pivot table. Okay, have oh. like that. Then I'll just come and pick. to average so 
So there it is at 40.9. like that so uh thank you ladies and gentlemen and that is how we calculate the special aggregated food consumption